Well, we've had lots of rain today, as you can imagine, and the Salton River behind me is very full. I'm going to step out of the way so you can see how full it is, as well as the Skykomish River in which the Salton runs into. So we have the Salton here. It's spilling over. It has really risen since we've been here working. And then you can see the Skykomish River in the distance there, and that is really flowing as well. So this was a really great day to start collecting rain data for the DNR. They set out today to uh, start to put rain gauges up in order to figure out how much rain will trigger debris flows here in the area of the Bull Creek burn scar. We wanted to go along to see uh, where those rain gauges were being installed, but we were told the high winds and inclement weather made it too dangerous to go out with that installation team. Geologists with the DNR say most of the research on debris slides has come from California, so the research here will help us understand how much rain it takes to cause those flows in western Washington. I don't want this bridge to be taken out, that's for sure. Um, so I'm watching it. The creek is raging behind Betsy Wright's community of Grotto. So I actually like to see it flowing like this. If I come out here and it's raining like this and the water has stopped, I'm going to be taking a trek up there to see where it's going. She doesn't mind the driving rain or swift water, noting that it can be normal for this time of year. Does it freak me out? Um, well, no, I like it. <laughs> a little weird. <laughs> However, what's different, the Bolt Creek fire. The burn area is just right here. The fire left a large burn scar behind the community and threat of debris slides along with it. So if the trees fall and start blocking up and diverting the water from this creek, I'll be worried. The National Weather Service says a general rule of thumb indicates that half an inch of rainfall in less than an hour is sufficient to cause flash flooding in a burn area, but that can vary. And when it comes to debris flows, this graphic from the National Weather Service shows how a hardened layer, shown in red, forms over the soil after a fire. That layer doesn't allow water in. A sand-like surface of ash and debris sits on top of the red layer, mixing with water, and when it finally breaks down, the water can push everything off the slope with it. In order to better understand debris flows in western Washington, the DNR's Kate Mickelson says a team was heading out Friday to install rain gauges in the area of the Bull Creek Fire burn scar. West side fires are kind of a new emerging science on how many years are um, structures at risk downstream of the fire. Um, and that can be up to five years, we think. She says in Oregon's 2017 Eagle Creek fire, the larger debris flows weren't reported until 2020, and the DNR study will provide important data west of the Cascades. The debris flow modeling that the USGS uses um, is based out of Southern California, which has very different climate and vegetation. She says the thresholds in those California models may not be applicable here, so the team will try to learn how much rain it takes to trigger flash flooding and debris flows by serving local burn areas after atmospheric rivers or major storms pass through. The idea for that would be to give that back to the USGS and they can fine tune their model to be more Pacific Northwest specific. Betsy's doing a little research of her own. She says her rain gauge in Grotto showed that at least four inches of rain had fallen overnight. What's falling now is is rolling off the mountainside and coming down to this creek. And Kate Mickelson says that once they gather that data, it can also be shared with the National Weather Service so they know what type of threshold to look out for before issuing alerts. Reporting live in Salton, Jennifer Dowling, Fox 13 News. Thank you.